Uh, another policy question. Last year, the legislature passed a bill that, depending on who you talk to, kind of does or kind of doesn't close the Delaware loophole, which allows <coughs> a lot of companies to escape the state's um, corporate net income tax by registering cer certain operations uh, in Delaware. So a lot of people in both parties have said for a long time, the rate should be lower and all of the loopholes that allow people to evade the tax should be closed. And my question to you is, if so many people want this, why hasn't it happened? And why will you as governor make a difference? And we're gonna start with Katie McGinty. Well, thanks. I do think that we need to completely overhaul um, our taxation uh, system not only on corporations, but on working families. And to start there for a second, I have proposed an initiative that would say we have to first give hardworking Pennsylvanians a raise, and that means raising the minimum wage, and study after study now makes clear our economy will not grow unless we have wages recover from the erosion of the buying power of those wages over time. Second, I've proposed a tax cut for hardworking families so that together we might begin to approximate a living wage in Pennsylvania. Now, in terms of corporate taxation, in 2004, uh, a deal was reached that would say we should fully close the Delaware loophole uh, to support Pennsylvania businesses and then enhance our competitiveness by bringing down the top line of the corporate net income tax. I think that makes sense, and I think we ought to get behind that. Overall, I think we need to look at the various expenditures and exemptions and loopholes we do have in our taxation system now. It adds up to the tune of 500 to 800 million dollars a year of initiatives that maybe made sense at one time, but now work against those who are employing Pennsylvanians and have businesses in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Allison Schwartz. Uh, yes. Uh, let, let's start uh, at a number that I think would really surprise uh, and dismay many Pennsylvanians. Seventy percent of Pennsylvania corporations do not pay the corporate tax in Pennsylvania. Seventy percent. Okay, does that call for reform? Yes, it does. So uh, what we start there and, and how we get this done is say that publicly, that 70% of Pennsylvania companies do not pay a corporate tax in Pennsylvania. So we have to do something about it. The first thing we do is we do close that Delaware loophole. What that means is companies register in Delaware because it's a cheaper rate, uh, even if they're located here. So we have to close that loophole, and that would bring in $500 million to Pennsylvania. Resource and revenues that we need, uh, it's only fair and right that corporations uh, would pay that amount. I would also be, um, be very clear, and uh, let me just say, I have served, I continue to serve on the Ways and Means Committee in Washington. That is the tax writing committee for the uh, nation, so we've dealt with both individual and corporate taxes, and the fact is that corporations have to pay their fair share. Uh, the special uh, tax provisions that allow them to have deductions that may even have been worthwhile at some point, but are not, if they're not growing our economy, if they're not helping to promote uh, growth in industries, uh, if they're really very one specific company, uh, we should get rid of those loopholes. Uh, I do believe that there's some tax incentives that can matter, like for energy efficient buildings, for uh, hiring veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan, something I got done. Uh, the fact is that there are ways we can do this, but they should be broad brush, we should make sure that companies Allison in Pennsylvania Schwartz, pay their fair share. Thank Allison, you. Allison Schwartz, your time is up, but I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds because the question I asked was, if we all agree this needs to be done, why, why hasn't done? it happened? You spent 14 years in the state Senate. In 30 seconds, why doesn't it happen? You need to have, have a, a governor who's an advocate. We have a governor who's not advocating for this. Uh, it really is uh, th this Democrats in the state Senate in particular, but in the House as well. They'll talk about it today when the governor uh, answers, uh, gives his budget address. Is it because uh, special interests get ways? in? Is it because the lobbyists and special interests get in there when it gets right Look, down to you, it? My loophole, my loophole gets protected even though I'm for everybody else again, is getting closed. You need to have the experience. And of course they're going to come ask you that. doesn't mean you say yes. We have a governor who says yes to these corporations. You need to be able to say, look, we want fair tax policy for corporations in Pennsylvania. But you have to make clear they've got to pay their fair share. You have to articulate that. You have to create that leadership. You have to be outspoken about it, and I would be. Thank you. Tom Wolf. 
Uh, we need to reduce the, uh, or eliminate the Delaware loophole and reduce tax rates. Now, first of all, three, three things. What is the Delaware loophole? I was Secretary of Revenue. I was also in the, a member of the uh, Business Tax Reform Commission during the Rendell administration, so I've studied this as much as anybody. The Delaware loophole is this. If you have royalties, patents, or trademarks in your possession in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is what's called a separate company reporting state, you can shift the ownership of those assets to a state that doesn't charge taxes on the income derived from those and charge your Pennsylvania company the amount of money that it costs to rent those trademarks, patents, and royalties. Guess how much those Delaware companies charge the Pennsylvania company for the use of those? about the amount of net profit that the Pencil Pennsylvania company makes. So the Pennsylvania company ends up owing no tax in Pennsylvania. It's a scam. I only have 45 seconds left. But we, we, need, to, we need to close that loophole because we could lower rates. And if we lower the rates, we could actually be more attractive to companies coming into Pennsylvania or entrepreneurs who are living in Pennsylvania who might create businesses and jobs here. Why the weight? The weight gets back to Dave's point. Uh, when I was revenue secretary, I was in, inundated with people who would come to me and look for special tax breaks, entrenched interests. No one speaks for the companies out there that are just starting up. They don't have the wherewithal to have representation in Harrisburg. And so when you have a choice between targeted tax cuts and broad-based tax reduction, the targeted tax cuts always get preference. The targeted tax cuts always work to the advantage of the entrenched interests and the entrepreneurs who are going to create new jobs uh, get the... Get Tom Wolf, did your company ever register anything in Delaware? Oh, uh, let me, yes. We, we, we have, there are two, two things that we need to make a distinction here. When I, got to, when I got to revenue and was being confirmed by the Senate, a number of Republican senators said, well, now your company is chartered in Delaware. First of all, I said it was not my company because when I was Secretary of Revenue, I had sold the company. And the private equity firm that bought minority stake in the company insisted on chartering it in Delaware because they liked the laws that were good to uh, uh, private equity firms and owners of companies in Delaware. That had nothing to do with what you're talking about here, which is the Delaware loophole, which allows Pennsylvania companies to actually establish subsidiaries in Delaware called the Delaware uh, um, loophole, the Delaware uh, uh, Passive Investment Company. I do not have one of those. I pay my taxes in Pennsylvania. Okay, thank you. John Hanger? Well, the, as to the question about why the loophole hasn't been closed uh, and why the corporate net income tax, uh, formally at least, is 9.9% and the highest in the country, it serves a lot of special interests. 70% uh, of businesses don't pay the tax, so they've got exactly the tax rate they want. And uh, frankly, some business interests, organized biz business interests, like the 9.9% tax rate to remain on the books, even when Republicans uh, totally control government, because they can use that to say Pennsylvania has a terrible tax climate, when in fact it actually doesn't have a terrible tax climate. Uh, so it serves all kinds of cynical Harrisburg games, uh, both uh, the 9.9% and uh, the uh, failure to close the loophole. Uh, we need to uh, actually get beyond those cynical games, and that's one of the reasons I think big money in government and campaigns is a huge problem. I'm not running a big money campaign. I've called for public financing of, uh, th of this campaign. Uh, I note that Governor Cuomo is calling for public financing of New York elections. Uh, I would love uh, my Democratic colleagues to say, do they or do they not support public financing of governor's races? Joellen Litz. Thank you, sir. When I look at the Delaware loophole, I see many things. Um, you're supposed to turn back money if you have gift cards that were purchased and not redeemed, if you have insurance policies that have not been claimed. There's so many reasons that you're supposed to turn back money. But what ends up happening is Delaware, our friends there, are pretty smart. They're pretty shrewd. And so I'm going to tell you why we should close that loophole from a business perspective. In my humble opinion, what we have going on here is that they can go back 32 years and assess penalties and fines if someone has not turned things over. And it's a little harder to monitor because you have crossing state lines. And so if that money has not been turned over, it could have been an accident. I'm not saying that it was intentional, but if they find where money has not been turned back, what ends up happening, there are actually companies who go bankrupt because they can't afford to pay back 32 years worth of fines and penalties. 
they have said, well, we'll give you a break and we'll only go back 16 years. So in the reading that I've done, I've learned that this Delaware loophole is lucrative for Delaware, but not really for Pennsylvania companies. And if you're listening, check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I think you're going to find that it would be much easier just to pay the corporate net income tax right here in Pennsylvania, and we would collect what's due us, and we wouldn't be giving it to an out-of-state company who might come after you later. Thank you. Okay, and now it's time for an on-the-spot question for Allison Schwartz. Um, Allison Schwartz, some of your opponents and uh, some in the media have said that you are the candidate that Governor Corbett really wants to face in November, largely because you have a solidly Democratic voting record in Congress and in the legislature. And uh, what do you say to those folks who claim that you may not be as electable statewide as some of the, some of the other candidates on, up here today? Uh, what I would say is, uh, look at my record, look at who I am, look at why Tom Corbett is so worried about my being nominated, is because he knows that taking me on, uh, and he's already taken me on actually, we're already having a debate, I'm having a debate with Tom Corbett about energy, the, the natural gas uh, energy, and the, whether we should actually have an extraction tax, which he has opposed. I'm happy to stand up for Pennsylvania families uh, while he stands up for the natural gas companies not paying a dime in an extraction tax. That's a good thing. Uh, so we're, we're, I stood up on education and he said he didn't didn't really cut a billion dollars out of our schools. You go ask any teacher or student or parent about that. I am proud to have that debate with him. He's taking me on because he is deeply concerned that I will be the nominee and I will beat him. And he's right to be concerned because that is exactly my plan and uh, he would not be paying this much attention to me if he didn't think it mattered uh, because it does. Uh, so I am, uh, you know, I am proud of uh, the, the stance I have in the state. I have run and won and stood up for Pennsylvania sam families time and again and uh, many Pennsylvania families know that uh, and I'm looking forward to this debate with, with the governor and I think he's deeply worried about it. <laughs> 